everybody welcome back to IP farms okay today's project at hand is to begin the restoration or repair I should say of this antique eight disc disc plow I picked this up from a guy down towards the southern part of the state he had bought it at auction it's like it's been sitting in the weeds for many many years uh, my goal for this piece of equipment is to use it in the fields that I have cleared to help chop up some of the small sapling roots and we have a very bad issue with honey locust trees um, so I'm hoping that once I get this back together and in usable condition that it will help chop up some of the roots and debris that were left over from the clearing at least that's what I've read they're good for I've never quite seen one this big especially with rubber tires but regardless it's going to take a lot of work to get back to where it needs to be I apologize for the sun and the shadows uh, this is a I guess what you would consider a manual trip mechanism this tire here uh, is a trip mechanism I think you pulled it with a rope to raise and lower uh, depending on where you were in the field I guess at the end of the rows but anyway my plans are to completely convert this over to hydraulic lift and that is going to consist of quite a bit of fabrication with the lift arms and getting a place set up to install the hydraulic cylinder and possibly even some addition to the pieces that are already there to make it possible the research that I have done it kind of the one tire just pivots up and it kind of tilts it at an angle to get it out of the ground and then when you want to start plowing with it you release that other side and it just drops it down level so my goal is to just like I said convert it over to complete hydraulics um, they say it takes a pretty good sized tractor to pull these uh, this one having eight disc they're quite large I haven't measured them yet but I have a 1086 international so I think it'll be well suited behind it for what I need to do with it but today I'm going to begin by trying to remove the wheels and tires and get the old tires off the rims they're pretty bad shape they need to be sanded down and painted and get ready for the install of some different tires I just have some used three rib tractor tires that I'm going to put on it with some tubes inside uh, I think I have one that um, has a six lug hole pattern in it for this uh, trip mechanism wheel over here it's a little different than the others but anyway we're going to begin the process today and see what happens so I'm going to try to get this jacked up and situated with some blocks under it so I can get the wheels off and if I succeed with that I'll bring you back for a little bit more insight on removing these tires I'm sure that haven't seen the light of day off the rim in many many years if any of you guys or gals know any branding on this particular plow please feel free to leave it in the comments I've been unable to find any kind of tags or identification on it or even anything online that looks similar this long I don't know if it's a furrow wheel you would consider it uh, seems to be exceptionally long compared to the ones I've seen with anywhere close to this many disc anyway I'll be back shortly okay everybody I'm back well the tire removal slash wheel removal was a success the bolts weren't near as bad as what I anticipated them to be but anyway they're in the shop so now the daunting task of removing beads on tires that probably haven't seen the light of day for many years as I stated earlier now begins I just want to take a few minutes in this particular video and give you a little bit of insight on some upcoming projects something that you may see may interest you and I hope that you stay tuned for more so I'm going to go over just a few things that are on the agenda while the ground is too wet to work and 
we have plenty of cold weather to keep us in the shop so bear with me um, I stated a couple of days ago I did a small video about the Gleaner combines this is the K that I got this is the one that runs and is almost at usable status as it is but there'll be plenty of videos on this as time goes along I'm finally done transporting both of them home in the heads so stay tuned for more videos on the Gleaner the rebuild process and repair if you will everything that I have and buy is in disarray and needs some kind of attention or fabrication but that's the drawback to doing everything on the low budget and part-time like I do but I do thoroughly enjoy it I'm very good at this part of it hopefully the farming will come as easy as the rest um, this is the two row corn head I got with the K uh, been sitting for a while does need a few things uh, cone missing off the front but we actually have a pretty good salvage yard here in North Carolina that specializes in gleaner combines so I don't think it'll be an issue uh, another small project is the Taylor Way 10 shank chisel plow um, really doesn't need a whole lot it's in very good shape it was barn kept uh, basically all I have to do to this to be ready to put it in the ground is just get some tires on it which I have just got to get those off and dismount it so there'll be a couple of videos on this um, move along to my 1987 Ford L8000 you saw a couple of uh, or actually a video on the cold start of this the other morning before retrieving the combines this is definitely a work in progress I bought it about six months ago superb running truck um, it's got some rust issues came out of West Virginia but I'm not too worried about that for a farm truck thus far I've uh, put the headache rack on it I've painted the wheels they were black I installed uh, two four-foot toolboxes on it built the brackets for those installed those to kind of take up the room I've installed new airlines um, for the trailer uh, projects that still need to be completed or the fifth wheel needs some attention I think it just needs to be taken off and cleaned up real good and greased um, it does have an aftermarket air ride suspension uh, that was added on I'm still on the fence whether I like it or not really can't tell truck rides pretty rough but I have to install an airbag on this side it's in pretty bad shape and it's got some uh, bushings in the cross brace for the air ride that I've got to get machined and installed I think the main drawback to it with the ride issue is that the gooseneck ball is so far back it kind of makes it uh, jerk a little bit but anyway it uh hauled both combines home and hauled my low boy trailer home from south carolina which that's another project coming up this is a 22 foot gooseneck trailer that i bought about a year ago uh, it was a farm hay trailer um, the tongue on it was very short uh, we cut that and raised to eight inches added the gussets and i rebuilt the whole front end here at the gooseneck uh, hitch itself bought a new bulldog 30,000 pound hitch um, raised it up for going the back of my truck anyway a good trailer solid frame uh, definitely needs uh, some attention on the floor it does have the old school Dexter axles under it uh, I believe they're rated at 6,000 pounds each I do have two 10,000 pound axles to go under it um, again they need to be cut and widened um, that's definitely on the agenda so stay tuned for that uh, I built the ramps for it temporarily I'm debating on whether to uh, add another two or four foot dovetail to it to make it a little bit longer and the load angle a little better but it pulled both combines home I think the K weighs somewhere around 75 to 7800 and the F weighs uh, around 10 between 95 and 10 I believe it did well it's about a 60 mile trip one way anyway these are just a few of the small projects that are upcoming and I will have videos on of course you see the F over there tucked away for now but anyway stay tuned I'm gonna get back to the shop and uh, see if I can get these 
tires off the wheels, bring you back, and hopefully I'll be successful. Thank you again for watching. If you got any questions, concerns, comments, please feel free to leave them. Be back shortly. Well, I thought I would add this in in front of the dismounting of the wheels since I did reference the low boy. Um, this is a, I believe it's right at 30 feet, 31 feet single axle low boy that I bought uh, out of South Carolina. Got a real good deal in it. Um, it does need some attention. Uh, very solid, not rusted at all as far as structurally. Um, I believe it is a Hercules brand. It's only a 15 ton, I think. But like I've stated in earlier videos, um, I don't have huge equipment. Mainly, I actually bought this trailer to <laughs> haul the combines at the point I was ready to get them, but I came across the two that I did a lot earlier, so this was not quite road worthy yet. Definitely needs trailer boards. Um, the biggest project on this one is probably gonna be the removal of the old style low boy uh, Dayton wheel axle, if you will. It runs the uh, eight and a quarter 15 low boy tires, which are Notorious for giving issues, constantly flats, got the tube and flap in it, two-piece wheel, blah, 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 blah. But uh, I do have a uh, set of axles out of a regular van trailer that I think we can get fabbed under here. The only drawback to it is uh, I'm going to have to run 22.5 low-profile tires, which is going to raise it up, the best I can tell, somewhere around six to seven and a half inches. Not really a big deal. Like I said, the 1086 is uh, about the only thing on here around here that uh, I'm gonna really need to transport other than the combines and for right now they're gonna stay here. Apologize, phone rings all the time. Anyway, um, as I was stating, the 1086, uh, we do have a little small Alice Chalmer track loader. Um, I believe it is a 655, got a little four cylinder naturally aspirated Alice Chalmer diesel in it. Um, this is what I've been using to clear the land with. Uh, works like a sewing machine for what I need to do. It's a little on the small side, but I don't have any great big growth in the fields. It's mainly just four to six inch trees. Um, it's done well. We use it all summer. Uh, no issues at all with it. Um, not sure if I'm going to keep this particular piece of equipment after I get finished clearing or if it'll go down the road, but regardless, I think it weighs somewhere don't quote me, but I want to say somewhere around 15, between 15 and 17,000, I think. So I'm thinking it would be a good fit for the low boy. But anyway, this particular item doesn't need any work done. So it's just waiting here for the ground to dry up and uh, where I can get back in and do some more clearing. But anyway, just thought I would give you a little insight on the low boy trailer that I referenced earlier. I'll definitely bring you guys along for uh, the adventure on the axle swap if that's the route I end up deciding to go. I believe it has a bent spindle on the one side, so between that and the issue with the tires, I'm more than likely going to swap the axle out. I do have a friend of mine that specializes in uh, axle repair, spindles and whatnot that could repair it, but anyway, all right, back to the shop to mess with the tires. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm back. Well, the old tire removal was successful. Uh, wasn't that bad, honestly. A lot better than what I thought. As they say, a blind squirrel gets a nut every now and again. I did run into one issue with this wheel here, which is on the mechanized side of the plow. Uh, this wheel has a military tire on it, and it feels like the tube is severely rusted and the bead rusted to the wheel. To the point where as I'm trying to break the tire off the rim, you can, as you can see the rim is in such bad disarray that it's bending the rim. I have a couple options here. Um, I've done it before. I can either cut the center out of this wheel and weld it into another one uh, to keep the same lug pattern or possibly I may, since I'm doing away with the uh, lift mechanism and change it to hydraulics I may just end up fabbing up a uh, different arm and putting a regular spindle on it 
I had to do that with a bush hog I bought. But anyway, I think this is going to be a stopping point for tonight. Uh, I've got to go up and wash these wheels off, years and years of mud and water and everything else, let them dry, come back tomorrow and try to get the uh, rust and everything ground down, slicked up so I can paint the inside of the wheels, and get the new tires mounted. But I just wanted to throw this in there for you guys. Um, there's nothing that I do that I use expensive tools or have access to. So I just wanted to give you a little insight. These tools are what I used to break the beads of tires that I'm sure have been on the rims for 30 to 40 years. Uh, the particular tool to the right is actually a bead breaker, they call it. It's more or less just a gigantic slide hammer. Uh, I'll get a little closer view of it. Uh, it just comes out. It's got a spade on the end of it you put along the wheel. Um, that has come in very handy over the years. Uh, works great on tube tires. Uh, tubeless tires that are rusty, you have to put a little bit more effort into it. But just a couple of pry bars, a dead blow hammer, and a little uh, spray bottle of some soapy water. And that's it. That's all I use and some sweat off the forehead. But I just want everybody to understand that this is possible to do some of the things that I do on the low budget end without the expensive tools. Nothing wrong with that. And we all know, or at least I do, a dream of having those someday. But for right now, what I'm doing, I get by. I have for many years in aspects such as this. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up for today. Um, leave you guys with it. Uh, Hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing for more, leave your comments, uh, if you like the video maybe a thumbs up, if you don't thumbs down, it's totally up to you. Uh, this will be part one of the plow restoration if you will. Um, and let me know also if you guys are interested in actually seeing the process being done such as if you would want to see the tires being broke off the rims by hand with old school tools. Um, I can always do a time lapse or, you know, speed it up. I just don't want it to get boring and lose interest in people. I get long-winded when I talk, so I've got to work on that. Um, but any, anything you guys want to see more of that I'm doing, uh, please let me know. Not a problem at all to set up the tripod and uh, time lapse it if need be or give a detailed explanation. But I did want to give you the uh, rundown on just the simple tools that I used. Uh, I've got another good pry bar, and I don't know where it is, so I use an old school nail puller, if you will, crowbar, I think they used to call it. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.